Are you making this big mistake with parallel compression? By the end of this video, you'll know why parallel compression might be hurting your mixes rather than helping, and my special technique to fix it. Let's get started. Hello everyone, this is Dylan with Musician on a Mission, here today with another mixing tip for you. This one's gonna be going over parallel compression and the mistake that you're probably making right now in your own mixes with it. But first, I wanna let you know that we are giving away for free our Compression Cheat Sheet Suite. It's our collection of five different cheat sheets on compression. And it's going over stuff like the anatomy of a compressor, how to use a compressor on any instrument, how to set up mix bus compression. Just click the link on screen or down in the description below to grab it. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the most common mistakes that's made with parallel compression. It's something that you've made a million times, I've made it a million times, but the faster that you change your workflow to not make this mistake, the better your mixes are gonna sound. So for anyone who doesn't know what parallel compression is, it's basically the style of compression where you create a copy of a sound and you compress that sound really aggressively and then just mix it in very quietly. It's a great alternative to actually compressing something because you can still keep like the dry sound, the very natural sound of drums or vocals or electric guitars, but you still get to mix in some of that very tonal sound, some of that really like aggressive and controlled sound that you're getting with your wet channel, with your parallel compression channel. So it's a great combination of both worlds but it's also one of the hardest things to balance into a mix. And that's because the two main ways that people do parallel compression are usually causing more problems than they're solving. So let's go over the two incorrect ways that most people usually use parallel compression. So I'm gonna go into this mix and I'm going to go to my vocals, my lead vocals. And I'm gonna solo them out. Sleeting like a sunny rain, a perfect storm of charm and dangerous. Okay. So let's say that I wanted to create some parallel compression to this. I wanted to get a little bit more control out of it. So I would go over here and create a send. I go and select a bus. Let's just say 52, why not? And I would make sure that the volume on this send is turned up to unity. Now all of a sudden I have a copy right here. So let's just say, um, I'll just grab something simple, 1176. Sleeting like a sunny rain, a perfect storm of charm and dangerous. Us was not a thing, you were like a hurricane, swept me up and spit me out. It glittered like a sunny rain, a perfect storm of charm and dangerous. Okay, cool. And so now what we would do is just take this down and subtly mix it in, right? Sleeting like a sunny rain, a perfect storm of charm and dangerous. So that seems simple enough, right? Like what could actually be a problem with that? Well, in almost every single mix you do, you are gonna be doing volume automation. By the time you get to the end of the mix, you're gonna to have to have gone in and turned up certain words or certain phrases, or turned up certain sections of the song, turned down certain sections of the song. In order to balance a mix, volume automation is nearly essential to making it happen. So the problem is that right now we have our send selected to be going post pan. You can see if I click on this, right now I have post pan selected, and that is what is almost always default in all DAWs. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, you can see that there's three options that we have here, post pan, post fader, and pre fader. For the sake of this argument, post pan and post fader are pretty much the exact same thing. It's basically saying, hey, when do I want to send out a copy of my vocal? Do I want to send it out before the volume fader, after the volume fader, or after the pan? So if it's post pan, that means that whatever I set the pan to and whatever I set the volume fader to is going to affect how loud or how quiet my send is. Now, if I selected pre fader, then what that means is that no matter how loud or how quiet I set my volume fader, the amount that's getting sent to this aux channel to my parallel compression is not going to change. So I'll show you right now what I'm talking about. So with post pan, take a look at how loud and how quiet it's getting over here. 
Slid in like a sunny rain, a perfect storm of charm and dangerous. Let me turn this off for just a moment. Slid in like a sunny rain, a perfect storm of charm and dangerous. You see how as I turn it up and down, you see the volume over here on our parallel compression also go up and down. I'm actually going to name this really quickly. Now if I select a prefader, Sliding like a sunny rain, a perfect storm of charm and dangerous. You can see as I turn my original vocals up and down, nothing actually changes. So that's basically the difference between pre-fader and post-fader and post-pan. So having it post-pan, that basically means that if I was to go in and do any kind of automation, so if I was to say, oh, I want this to be you know, a lot quieter and I want this to be a lot louder for whatever reason then the amount of gain that's getting sent to our parallel compressor is going to be changing throughout the song. And since compressors are entirely dependent on how much gain is being sent into them, how much level is being sent through the compressor, we're going to have some pretty dramatic changes in the tone of our compressor. I mean, that's the whole reason that compressors have a threshold knob is we're basically setting it to say, okay, well, when it goes above negative 18 decibels, I want to turn the compressor on. Well, if sometimes the level of the instrument is being sent out at negative 15 decibels, well, you know, great, it's getting compressed. But if you automate the volume down of the original track, then you might now be sending only 21 dBs of level which means that the compressor isn't even going to be working at all. This is going to create some really inconsistent compression sounds. Your tones are just going to be all over the place throughout your entire mix. So if using a post fader send is one common mistake that people make whenever they're doing parallel compression, well, what's the other one? Well, it's actually disguised as a solution. This is usually what people tell you to do to fix the problem that post fader sends make, and that's to do a pre-fader send. Now, in theory, this fixes the problem of the post-fader send. Now there's no more inconsistency in the level that's being sent. If we are automating our level up and down as the song goes on, this will remain the same, which means our compression will remain the same. So we're not going to have a, an inconsistent tone anymore, right? Well, not so much, unfortunately. By fixing a problem, we have created a new problem. So now, if we turn down the volume of our track, what happens? So again, let's talk about this. So this section, for whatever reason, I'm going to have set to negative 7.8. This section is set to 1 plus 2.3, whatever. And what's going to happen is that my dry signal is going to get louder and softer and louder and softer, but my parallel compression is going to sound the same. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Sliding like a sunny rain, a perfect storm of charm and dangerous. Us was not a thing. You were like a hurricane, swept me up and spit me out. Sliding like a. Now it's a little bit difficult to hear just because the signal got so much louder in general. But what really happened is we weren't actually necessarily turning volume up and volume down. We were just changing the balance of our dry and our wet signal. So that means that this particular phrase actually has way more compressed signal in it, and this particular phrase has way more dry signal in it. We're just changing our balances. And that's basically because now that it is being sent out pre-fader and no longer post-fader, our parallel compression is no longer linked to our original volume level. And like I said, that solves one problem, but we still get inconsistent tone, just in a different way. Now the workaround to this would be to automate the parallel compression channel in the exact same way that we automate our vocals or our drums or whatever. But honestly, that takes a lot of time. It's not easy to go back and forth and basically just do an exact copy of volume automation two times in a row, maybe even three or four or five if you're using different kinds of parallel compression. So how do we solve this issue? Well, not actually with a fancy send trick, but with what I call the volume bus. It's a really, really simple technique that you can do with any of your instruments that you know that you're going to be doing parallel compression with. And I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. And by the end of this, you'll absolutely understand what I'm talking about. So right now, I have my lead vocals just as an audio file, and they're just going straight into the stereo output. That's fine, right? 
Well, we're actually going to create a bus that everything is going to flow into. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have a pre-fader send on our parallel compression, which we already do. We basically have our pre-fader parallel compression already set up. So all of the gain that's getting sent here is totally consistent throughout the entire song. Now, I'm also going to take this off, and you'll see why in just a moment. So step two to the volume bus is to route your instrument or your instrument bus to a new bus. So I'm going to take my lead vocals away from the stereo output, and I'm going to send them to a new aux track using a bus. When I say I'm going to send them to a new aux track, using a bus, I don't actually mean I'm going to use a send. A send is something that creates a copy of the track. I'm actually just diverting the flow of the audio to another place. It's almost like I'm putting a new pipe in the pipeline rather than just creating a totally different flow of audio. So right now, this vocal is now flowing into bus 53, which you can see is this aux track right here, and bus 53 is flowing into the stereo output. So I'm gonna call this Vox volume. Now we'll move on to step three, and that's to route my parallel compression track to that same bus. So I'm gonna go back over here, I'm gonna click on my parallel compression, here we go. I'm gonna go to the output, and I'm going to select bus 53, the Vox volume. Now I'm going to right click and hit create track. So here is the beauty of the volume bus. I now have both my original vocals and my parallel vocals flowing into this exact same bus. So let's see what happens now whenever I turn the volume up and down. Sleeting like a sunny rain, a perfect storm, I'm in dangerous. Us was not a thing. Both the parallel compressed signal and the dry signal come down and up at the exact same ratio. We're not changing the balance. We're not making anything too loud or too quiet. It's staying exactly the same the whole time. But the cool thing about this is that like, I'm still doing all of my processing on the original track and I'm doing you know, a lot of my effects on the original track. But if I wanted to do, say, a reverb and I wanted my parallel compression to go to that reverb and I want my regular vocal to go to that reverb, well, all I gotta do is go over here and create a new send on my Vox volume bus and just put a reverb on it. And now all of a sudden, both my dry and my compressed signal are getting the right amount of reverb. Sleeting like a sunny rain, a perfect storm of charm and dangerous. Us was not a thing, you were like a hurricane, swept me up and spit me out a glitter like a sun. And then also I can do all of my automation on this channel. If I wanted to go in and do exactly what I was talking about before, you know, maybe turn this phrase down a bit, this up a little bit, I can do it right here. And I'm going to keep the balance of the compression and the regular vocals exactly the same. Sleeting like a sunny rain, a perfect storm of charm and dangerous. Us was not a thing, you were like a hurricane, swept me up and... So it's simple as that. And now your tracks have a consistent, balanced tone throughout the entire song. And you're never gonna have to worry about copying over automation or accidentally wrecking your compression ever again. And one quick bonus tip, this is also really helpful for parallel saturation or any parallel distortion. Like if you're doing anything where you are just changing the tone or changing the dynamics of the original sound and you just wanna mix it in parallel, use this trick, use the volume bus, because then you're going to make sure that the balance is exactly where you want it to be for the entire mix. So that's gonna about wrap it up for me. If you enjoyed this mixing tip, please give this video a like, and if you really enjoyed it, then maybe hit that subscribe button. We post tips and tutorials like this all the time on this channel, so you're gonna get some great stuff to improve the sound of your songs. And before we head out, don't forget to grab your free copy of the Compression Cheat Sheet Suite. Wow, that is a tongue twister. Say that five times fast. Compression cheat seat. Compression cheat seat. Compression cheat sheet seat. Goodness. Anyway, make sure to get the free compression cheat sheet seat. Cheat suite. Just make sure to download the compression suite. You are going to get 
five different fantastic cheat sheets that are absolutely going to help you to compress better, especially if you're just learning how to do compression and you don't really understand what all the knobs do. It's really going to help you out. So this has been Dylan with Musician on a Mission. I hope you all have a great week. And remember, create regardless. Regardless.